electrifying event you could possibly play at. For some reason, every year it's that Anaheim event just seems to be the best one. Most hyped up Call of Duty event every year. The Anaheim crowd, it's, it's literally electric. You walk in the venue and you feel that crowd. It's just that one event per year that you don't want to miss. A scary first game, but a victory nonetheless. Look at the energy from Havoc and Nameless standing up, high-fiving. Greenwall fans, make some noise. Your team is perfect at the end of day one. Complexity, something that no one thought could be done. The Gaming just let it go. EG, Anaheim champion. I think it's going to be the craziest Anaheim we've ever seen this year. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Call of Duty Global Pro League Anaheim Open presented by the PlayStation 4. It is Championship Sunday, and we are so excited to get our games underway. My name is, of course, Spencer. I'll be hosting the studio throughout the day. But joining me on my star-studded desk, we have Merc, of course, a 13-time champion, including Cod XP. We have Proof, a 10-time champion, including X Games Gold. And sat closest to me, we have TP, an 18-time Call of Duty champion, including a Call of Duty World Championship, and, of course, that ring. And uh, to be honest, that kind of kickstarts the, the conversation straight off the bat, Championship Sunday. You guys have a combined 41 Call of Duty Championships between you. So I have to ask Proof, what does it take to get to the finals of a tournament? It takes a lot of resilience. You have to stick to your game plan. You have to trust your teammates. You have to be extremely comfortable and you have to be playing your game. You can't get distracted. You have to stay focused, getting here early, getting your warm-ups in, no talking to other teams <laughs> about your strategies. You're good to go. Obviously, Proof, you, you had success here in Anaheim in 2011. TP, you were actually teaming with him back then, but you also had success here in 2011. 2013 and 2014. So this is a, a kind of a, a usual spot for you, I guess. You know, a championship Sunday here in Anaheim. Is there any advice you could give to any of the players or teams out there? I think one of the most difficult matches you have to play is that first one in the loser bracket on Sunday. You know, it is a little bit earlier on in the day, and we all know gamers, you know, they play a little bit later on in the day. So the <laughs> fact that you have to get here, get woken up, and most importantly, be in that mental state that you need to be in to win. If you're able to win that first match in the loser bracket, I feel like it really gives your team a lot of confidence. You start to wake up, warm up, and most importantly, start clicking as well a team at the best time. Right. It's all good and well if you're in the winner's bracket, Merc, because obviously, you know, you have a little bit bigger of a cushion, but if you're in the loser's bracket, that has to be very, very stressful. Well, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. The winner's bracket, yeah, it's nice because you have to lose twice, but if you lose that first game, you know, this game between, you know, Epsilon and Spice, what we're going to see, that team, that loser, they're going to play a very hot team in that loser's bracket. How many times have we seen the team in winner semis, they just lose two in a row because it's so hard for them to just sort of get in the zone, and then they lose that first game, and then, you know, just like that, they're out of it because they're playing a team that's hot on, on Sunday. Momentum definitely key on Championship Sunday, but now we'll take a look at our winner's bracket, our championship winner's bracket at that. Of course, at the top side, we have Evil Geniuses taking on uh, Enigma 6, or they took on Enigma 6 last night. They have a 3-2 victory. LG, a 3-2 victory over Optic Gaming, sets up the winner's bracket semifinal of EG versus LG. Over on the bottom side, Splice made slight work of Bittersweet with a 3-0 dispatch. Epsilon, a 3-1 dispatch of E United, sets up the European battle over at the bottom side of the bracket. So Splice, Epsilon. And I, I, if you want to briefly go down the line uh, and get your thoughts, especially the top game, Evil Geniuses versus Luminosity. Uh, Merc, what is the, the ceiling for this EG squad? Obviously, they pick up Parasite. He's able to clutch a massive 1v2 late last night. I mean, can they shut down Luminosity? It's going to be very tough. The Luminosity we saw last night, it, it's just so hard to slay with them. Even Optic Gaming struggles with it. There's just so much talent on that team. Evil Geniuses, they're going to have to find a way to slow the game down, have to get an early lead, let Parasite sort of work those angles, make it difficult for Octane to sort of go on a streak, but it's going to be a very tough task to do. I, I, I don't know if I see EG pulling this one out. Yeah, as you mentioned, that I wanted to get into that Parasite Octane showdown, the new player on EG. It's really going to come down to whether he can maintain Octane, and then I think it depends on if Nameless is going to have that MVP performance, if he's going to be doing everything for his team like we saw at Stage 1. I think one of the most important things of this new pickup for EG Parasite is that's the sort of moment at the end there that you really expect Haggy to sort of excel in those one versus one scenarios in Search and Destroy. It's really what he has done his whole career, a very long career, so the fact that he's able to do it again, very 
beneficial for them. But you talk about the ceiling of this team, I think they've hit it definitely. Going against okay. LG, I think they're going to get outclassed. They've already overperformed, in my opinion, securing this top six placing, but I think it ends. Excited to watch them play. I'm still thinking about Parasite just popping that overdrive, just flying straight at him. Yeah. That's crazy. Awesome. Kills and almost cost him the round before. <laughs> <laughs> that that would have been one of the biggest fails of the weekend if they'd have lost that match, that's for sure. Uh, moving forward, though, we'll take a look at some of the games going on in our losers bracket. Of course, we are at Championship Losers Round 4. Here is what to expect. Bittersweet are going up against Red Reserve, E United versus Cloud9, up to Gaming versus Rise Nation, and Enigma 6 versus TK. I mean, when you look at that list, Merka, is there any game that you think, okay, this is probably going to be a close one? I, I think Optic Rise just right away, right? I mean, you would probably say Optic outclasses them, but again, that first game, it's very difficult. Optic, they come off a loss last night. Rise, they win a few games in a row. I, I could just see Rise sort of go the distance with Optic. I'm, I'm expecting at least a game game four or five. And one thing is Rise is definitely well practiced for this tournament. They've played Splice. Yeah. They've played Luminosity in their pool. Optic didn't really have that much of a challenge getting here right now. The best team they played was Luminosity, and I thought that was their warm-up, getting their game going, figuring out how to get back to that top pace. I think they're good today, and I think that is going to be the game to watch Rise Nation versus Optic Gaming. The other game I want to keep my close eye on, obviously, is the United Cloud9 game. Cloud9 got a yeah. huge win versus FaZe to knock them out late last night. We were able to watch that one. And it seemed like Cloud9 was really fixing a lot of those issues on the fly and it's really characteristic of a lot of Aix's teams going through that loser bracket. They're not choking those hard points anymore. They're actually clutching up in the hard points versus FaZe. But FaZe was looking extremely weak throughout this whole tournament. Sure. I don't know how much weight to put into that. And United, a very strong team. <laughs> a championship Sunday with no team ambition, no team FaZe. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what. If, <laughs> if that Cloud9 team wins and Bittersweet wins, well, Lacefield, he gets what he wants. He gets to play Cloud9. So that's going to be a match you have to keep your eyes on. And if you're one of those teams, you know, this is a great bracket run for you. This is probably the bracket that you want. You can beat, you know, a Bittersweet or a Cloud9. And then you would probably end up playing the, the loser of EGLG. Who knows? One of these guys could finish top four very, very easily. Obviously, you mentioned that kind of a rivalry. I'm thinking, what if we somehow have a Cloud9 Optic gaming matchup? That could potentially happen. <laughs> Pat versus the Green Wall once again. I would love there's, to see that. There are so many <laughs> possibilities today. It's what makes Championship Sunday just such an exciting day. And of course, we should recap what is on the line here at the CWL Anaheim Open. $200,000. That is what everyone is playing for today. First place walks away with $80,000. Second place, $48,000. And third place will secure $32,000. So still, so much money on cash the line. Money. So much cash money. And we'll take a look, of course, now at the schedule for the day. We are kicking things off with the Battle of Europe on the main stage. It's the Stage 1 Champ Splice versus Epsilon. At 11.30, we'll see the second winner's bracket semifinal. Of course, on the top side of the bracket, it'll be Luminosity versus Evil Geniuses. Then we have our losers round 6 at 1 p.m. At 2.30 p.m., it's our winner's final at 4, the loser's final. And to close things out here at the CWL Anaheim Open at 5.30 p.m., it will be our grand final. But we will be jumping into all of our sides station matchups throughout the day to keep you updated on all of those matches and in terms of our two winners bracket finals the, the first one tp epsilon versus spice i feel like a lot of people may just sit at home thinking spice has got this this is easy it, it's an easy one for spice but epsilon has been so impressive this event oh most definitely their hard point has been you know kind of unbelievable in my opinion or really overperforming in that game type however i think spice I was talking to Zero last night, and he was just itching to get this matchup back. He wants to prove himself. You know, that 0-6 in, in the Birmingham final did yeah. not sit well with these Splice boys, so they <laughs> wanted to get this matchup. They've wanted it for months now to for prove sure. that they are. it's not going to happen again to them. Uh, we'll take a look now at our maps for the series. Obviously, Proof, I know you're, you're a big Dave fan. I'm going to get you a Dave T-shirt. You know what I expect from the series? A lot of screaming. A lot of screaming? I expect Zero to scream oh. every time he gets a two-piece, and I expect Dave to scream every time he gets a two-piece. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, here is a look at those maps. Breakout, hot point, crush Search and destroy a throwback uplink goes further with Scorch Hotpoint and a game five throwback S and D. Merc, how do you see the Battle of Europe going down? Well, uh, I'm going to be honest, that game number one, I think that's going to be probably the, the map that sort of decides the game because to me, I, I, we saw Luminosity, you know, get destroyed by Epsilon his map. Splice, they're very consistent on this breakout hardpoint. So I think game number one right away is going to sort of set the pace. You're going to have that Dave versus Zero matchup with those NV4s, a matchup that we're looking forward to. It, it's going to be a great one. Well, without further ado, let's get Championship Sunday underway with our first winner's bracket semifinal, Splice versus Epsilon, brought to you by Pocket the Momo. Thank you so much, Benson. And before we jump into the action, I want to say happy Father's Day, not only to our fathers, but also everyone that is here in the venue. So many great parents supporting their kids here in Anaheim. But Momo, 
Congrats to Jeff Puckett. Thank you for bringing me into this world. Who are you giving a shout out to? Andy Whitfield, he, did, he didn't really know what I do. You know, he sometimes asks, where are you going? Well, this is what I do, MLG Anaheim. It's gonna be a good one, but happy Father's Day to all of you guys out there. Uh, but yeah, a lot of action for Call of Duty and yes. it's the Battle of the Europeans. This one is going to be an epic showdown. It's the rematch from Birmingham and where we saw first it was Splice winning the game five in the winner's bracket final. So they get the early win, but the teams matched up not only once, they had to <laughs> play twice in the grand finals. Break it down for me, how did that play out? It, it was a, a one-sided affair to say the least. They, they took the first one 3-0. Uh, and ever since then, a lot of people said Splice, they'll bounce back, but it was the repeat. It was 3-0-3-0 in the CWL Birmingham grand final. That's to Epsilon. For you guys who know Splice, you know, yes, they've just won your stage one. However, Epsilon, a little bit of a story for their CWL Anaheim so far. They uh, they beat e United. They put them in the 100-point club in Hardpoint. LG beat them by over 100 points on Hardpoint. This is their game mode. They're really aggressive. They're really strong. This core three, with the addition of Josh, they are a very, very menacing squad. And I always say this. EU v EU, it's a weird one. You don't just put your, your, your number one seed straight through. Anything can happen. Up until Birmingham, we of course saw Josh on the team. He left Splice, went over to Epsilon, who didn't have a pool play spot, had faith in this lineup, and has really taken them to the top tier. Both teams at this point in the tournament guaranteed top six. This is a battle for top three, and we're going to see EU's best going toe-to-toe -to -toe in our opening hard point. Speaking to Zero before the game, he's got so much confidence in his own squad. And himself, you know, we see in the videos, we ask who is the best player on the game right now. He says, I am. And you know me. what? He's got a point to prove, and he, he's proven it so far. Uh, but let's kick things off, break out hard point. We're going to be looking at those rotations. Splice just spawning on that more preferred side for the start. You know, I was trying to think of who the best player on Splice is. And of course, Zero's <laughs> been getting a lot of love. But Mad Cat has had another incredible tournament for me. Always enjoy watching him. And Bance, he's just Mr. Consistent for this squad. For me, though, if you're going to have success in this early hard point, it's going to be Jerd. Watch the Irishman. If he's able to get things going early on with the SMG, playing that faster role, they can do damage. The opening fights are going to be won by Epsilon, though. It's going to be Dave scoring early, and they will still maintain control of this hard point. Look at the mini-map as well. Splice is now spawning on the left side of the map. These are all great things if you're an Epsilon fan. Absolutely. We talk about Jerd and his speed, the one team that can go toe-to-toe. -to -toe is Epsilon. The likes of Hawky and Vortex that have been playing so long together. In fact, Vortex and Bant, they're going, their XT makes themselves, you know, that's a long way back. But these guys, they have got history. And it's uh, not only, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on the line, a lot of bragging rights for these guys as well. But the rotation over to cell blocks, we're gonna see Bant and the boys from Splice take full control. But Epsilon, they're gonna try and break from the back. Will they have enough support? Vortex currently three and one. He's opting for the E-Rat. Hockey also in position to push in, and Hockey's gonna open things up on Jared. Now comes Vortex, Josh pinching, all perfect timing here. The excellent chemistry being shown here by Epsilon as they break on their first attempt. There's still 30 points to gather as they have a 15-point advantage. And you're going to see the score. It's led by Josh at five and three. He's on a three streak. Vortex right behind him, four and one, currently on a two streak. Well, strong start for Epsilon, 45 to 20. 15 seconds left to go. And we could see a two piece, but no. Zero gunning down his own teammate there, just escaping with his life for a few more seconds. But deleted by Vortex, we're going to see the rotation by Splice, and the scrap time will go to Epsilon. Those dark blue arrows are a little bit tough to see on the mini-map, but Dave did a nice job rotating early. Unfortunately, though, he's just going to be outgunned. It's Jerd who's going to find himself inside the hard point first. You see that protection on the back. It's Mad Cat and Vance watching the flank. And at the very back, it's Zero coming off the new spawns. They have the positioning they want here. The question is, how much time can they get before Epsilon finally breaks their setup? Well, when you've got a really strong setup and really strong assault rifle players, this could be a full 60. But Epsilon, they don't allow that to happen. They will be that aggressive play, play style and team that, you know, will just push it a four. And the one thing I like about Epsilon you guys should watch out for is just for them gathering up together and pushing as a team. However, Josh seems to be going lone wolf right now as Vortex does pick up either side. This is what we're talking about. They're broken and it seems so effortless. Vortex was distracting. Josh got behind him, able to pick up one by in time. Now there's another team kill from Splice. That has kind of been an issue on the last two hard points. And you see the lead. 
Over 40 points here. Epsilon, 73 and counting as we head to the commissary. Spice is set up once again for the new hill, but they just lost their spawns. Hawke with some big kills, working with Vortex on that back line, will lock in the spawns, and just like that, Epsilon has retaken control of the new hill. Yeah, and it's very rare we see one kill mean so much, but Vortex there making that one important play on the commissary makes Splice all spawn out, and they're going to have to go for another push, and whether they break it on the first or second attempt, it's going to take them at least five, ten seconds to even get over there. You can see where Bance and Jurd are spawning. It is not good, and Hawkey, he has the line of sight to take them down. If you're Epsilon, if you're an Epsilon fan, you have to look at these numbers and just be smiling. You see it three straight kills, unfortunately, coming in for Splice, but Epsilon, you have Dave, who's having an MVP-like performance this weekend in Anaheim. He comes in with the number two overall KD. Vortex, he's been your rock star in Search and Destroy, but he's leading the squad at 12 and five. Dave is having the worst performance on the team, and you're still more than doubling up on your opponent's score. If they keep playing this way, if all four players are playing lights out Call of Duty this morning, I think we could see this series finish in three to four games. Absolutely. I mean, that's what makes a great roster is, you know, when one player isn't stepping up and playing like their, their usual self. For example, Dave right now, 6 and 11. You know, you've got people to fill those shoes, to fill those boots, and Vortex right now is the first to get his payload. He's 15 and 6, and he's topping uh, the leaderboard on Hill Time 2. 65 seconds to his name. More than, you know, a lot of the players, in fact, all the players in the lobby themselves. Vance trying to heat up on a three streak, looking for kill number four. He's just 100 points away from the Scarab. And of course, he is always the camo player for this Splice team. That could be devastating for Breaking Hills later on. Jurd has his back, good team fire coming in and saving the day as Vance keeps scoring this lead. It is getting more and more narrow. Splice, they could bring this within about 30 points as we rotate to the new hill. The grenades coming in will finally clean up Bance, and the score streaks will not be acquired. Madcat coming flying through, stops Epsilon from scoring, but Splice, they're spawning across the map again. Yeah, and I want to point out one key player for this man is Josh. He does go down, but he rotated so early that he gave Vortex a much better spawn, who now is in the cell block kill. And looking at the minimap, you do favor Splice to retake this just with the amount of numbers, but Vortex is going to be pulling out the Scarab. That's information for his team, and I tell you what, you don't want to do that, but Bance turns and burns there, picks up number 14. Traded out, Josh finds one, Jurd again, back and forth between these two European oh. squads, but the double beat down from Madcat and Jurd, that is gonna take back the cell block for now. How many savior medals does Madcat have? He just came in and backwhacked Josh, keeping Jurd alive. Splice is still inside the hill, Jurd working against Hawking, but Hawking's gonna find two. The Epsilon player going big. Now he's got support from Josh. A highly contested hill here in the cell block. But Mad Cat's double may lock this down. But for how long? Hawkey, he is now 50 points away from the bombardment. That one kill right there could have changed the game. The reason that we say that is, of course, those score streaks. The Trinity Rocket going into this next graveyard hill. So, so crucial. But the kill feed lights up blue. Mad Cat the only one to answer back. And this actually might mean that Hawkey can push forward to in a very powerful position and pick up that bombardment. Two is or a single kill, and it's gonna get both there. As the bombardment is unlocked, Hawke on an eight streak now, Momo. He keeps going, knows where the spawns are gonna be. They flip sides of the map. Dave is gonna finish off the second. Josh is gonna get the first pick one by one. Splice is falling. You see the pre-fire here as Epsilon continues to score. They know the push is coming, but they are set up so strong. Hawkey last year, he was kind of labeled a bit of a scoreboard player. And I've said this time and time again, for me in the last 12 months, he's matured into someone who really does play for, towards the team and will be able to be able to utilize these score streaks very, very well. We're talking about the commissary in the next 10 seconds. And with a 60 point like lead like this, Epsilon, they have full streaks. Vortex has a payload. They have the score streaks. Right now, if you're an Epsilon fan, you're, uh, you're sitting pretty. And Vortex with another big double, that Erad coming into play on the back end near Commissary. Mad Cat trying to break through, gonna be met by Hawkeye's NV4. Bant's gonna try and go for the wall run. Dave is pre-aiming. This is gonna be so tough to break. Splice knows they have to group up and work together. You can't go one by one. That's been their issue over the last minute and a half. You see Bant's picked. Mad Cat's gonna try and flank with Jurd, but there is just too many members of Epsilon still up. Yeah, Jurd has done the right thing here to try and obtain the spawns. And I know there's only 30 seconds left, but he is going to be able to set up a pitch right now. Jurd and Bantz are going to combine. They should do the, should retake it, and they will do. That came from Jurd right there. He's the only one really to push around the back. And an intelligent play 
to say the least. 20 seconds left, and he's looking to take the majority, but no, Josh with the double, Dave answering back as well, and that is all four members of Splice put on those respawns. Another 12 seconds to add to the current 206. We're going into our third set of rotations with a very healthy lead for Epsilon Esports. All yesterday, we talked about the strength of Splice when it came to the respawn, what they can do when it comes to just picking up kills. On the other side, though, Vortex, Josh, all putting up positive numbers. Hockey there, he had the eight streak earlier, currently 17 and 15 with full streaks still available. This Epsilon squad, they're looking scary. Splice isn't going down without a fight, but it may be too little too late. If they're not careful, their opponents are just 33 points away now. Absolutely. We saw Luminosity yesterday take both hard points against Optic Gaming. This Epsilon squad, they've taken LGs, they've taken the Uniteds, and they're about to take Splice's hard point. It just shows what a real strong squad that this Epsilon team are. However, it is not over yet. Let's not rule Splice down and out. Zero and Jerd do pick up a couple. No one on the hill. No one's collecting those points just yet. And look at the spawns. 15 seconds to go here. Epsilon, you just got to play smart. You can give up this time easily. No problem. As long as Bantz doesn't break you with the camo, you are set up for success. Madcat's going to pick up a double, and we'll look to see where those blue arrows are going to pop up. Everyone is on the back right side of the map. This is a great setup here. You have the Scout and the Scarab coming out from Hawke. He's going to be able to see the wall run. That will come out. some pressure on the back end. Camo comes in. He's tagged up by the Scarab. Uh-oh, not what you want to happen. Scarab, not only getting great intel there, he's going to be able to be able to uh, communicate through his squad, but also it basically eliminates that camo player with 2-3-3 three, three on the board. This is looking so strong for Epsilon. They've got payloads to play with. Hawkey's nearly got his, and Dave, you're not having a great game, but it doesn't matter. The rest of the boys are stepping up, and there's still 30 seconds left here, Bucket. Vortex stays hot. He still has his payload, but Bantz, this is his third kill. Picked up two big ones out on the balcony. He was able to break through. Despite failing with the camo, he's getting it done on natural here with the NV4. Pre-aim in the doorway, but it's zero with the double. Vortex comes sliding through with the e ride Up close and personal. Zero's going to win the fight, and that will pick up the final seconds, but it's all going to come down to the graveyard right now. That triple from zero does mean that he does have reactive armor. A camo's just been popped there, and Madcat shooting wild, and actually, you know what? Madcat wasn't spotted there. This could be the start of something special. The reason being, that reactive armor that Zero has just used has enabled them to get a lot more space. Epsilon, they'll be uh, they'll be coming down this choke point, and here comes the score streaks from Epsilon. Centurion will be unlocked by Madcat any moment, but Epsilon, they need just one clean break. Here come the score streaks from the sky. No rockets connecting on that one. Bant waiting for his teammates. The Scarab coming out, but it's just three seconds away. They got to make the push on the hill, or this game is over. Not enough pressure, and Epsilon is going to get the free hill at the end. A little bit of a fight back there towards the end. Zero turned up. The reactive armor came in. A flashy FTL play picks up an extra kill. Not changing the game, but... That pressure from Epsilon. We spoke before the game, Pocket, about Jerd and the speed of what he could play. I said, Epsilon, they can go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And right now, you're thinking, is history repeating itself? Are we seeing another main stage performance from Epsilon? Last time they met, 3-0, 3-0. Clean sweeps all round. You look at the main slayers, everyone talks about that guy right there, Zero. He drops 28 kills, but on the other side of the stage, you had Vortex, one upping him at 29. He had the hot hand early. He had the impact kills with the E-Rad every time that commissary rotation came around. He had a fantastic first game, and for myself, I don't get a chance to watch a guy like Vortex enough. This person has all kinds of potential. Yeah, he, he, he's been fantastic for the past 12 to 18 months now, Vortex, but he's not really found himself on that championship winning team. Uh, we saw it kind of happen at Birmingham, and, and everyone kind of doubted it. We all, we all said, you know, is this gonna, you know, repeat itself? And I, I was a doubter. I, I looked at them and I said, Josh, you know, what have you done? You've left Splice to join this team. You know, they were like seed seven in Europe at that time. Uh, and Josh has kind of just risen them up and, and really helped this squad not only, you know, come together as a team, but Dave has just become twice as good since teaming with Josh. Vortex and Hawkey, they've worked out their problems and their, their differences. And, and Hawkey, for me, is much, he's much more of a team player now. So. And people forget, this e This is the squad that we saw finish top four at the Call of Duty World League Championships last year. Vortex, I remember playing for Fabi on the main stage, had some great games, a lot of upsets in that tournament. Josh, 
he had to play against that squad in that event, and he's pretty familiar with these players. And I actually talked to Josh, what is it like going up, well, now teaming with Vortex, teaming with Hockey, but also going up against your former squad Splice? You said, to be honest, we're still all kind of friends. We still oh, yeah. kind of hang out, we cheer each other on. He's excited to be playing against another EU team because it guarantees at least one EU team in the top three here in the winter semis. Yeah, talking of EU teams, the one team that e uh, Epsilon did lose to was Red Reserve. You know, uh, when they went up against each other, this is what I mean, EU v EU can be very strange. But Josh, you know, on the other side of the main stage, is a very, very close friend in Madcap. They teamed together for, I think, six years. I was actually lucky enough to team with both of them at the same time. Uh, that was very hard to deal with when they were both about 16, 17 years old. But just kind of seeing where they both come and found themselves now almost leaders and veterans of their own squad really is, uh, you know, it's humbling to see and, uh, and great to see for the European card. They may be making more money, Momo, but oh. you look better <laughs> in that time, my friend. It's Splice, it's Epsilon. This is your winner's bracket semifinals here at the Anaheim Open. $200,000 up for grabs, first place. 80 grand on the line. Mad Cat and Splice looking to make it back-to-back -back tournaments after winning our stage one finals. They now find themselves down 1-0 here in the best of five. But Search and Destroy is definitely a game mode where you can see them bounce back. It really is. Uh, talking of the game modes, the, the actual maps that were played here, we, we had a look before. These maps were played in the grand finals of CWL Birmingham. We all know how that panned out, you know, all Epsilon. Uh, so far, <laughs> Epsilon, they're looking strong again. Uh, but the one thing that I will say is Splice is uplink this tournament. Uh, and of course, at the stage one players, it was unmatchable. It was fantastic. And I don't think Epsilon will beat them on uplink. I was talking to Bance, he said, I think, you know, we, we've improved tenfold since Birmingham, and especially in that uplink, we feel we're the best team. And he said, actually, you make that one of one of the best teams in uplink. I think you can confidently say, if you're Splice right now, we are the best team in uplink. They proved it last night going up against Bittersweet, and I think they will definitely be a threat in game three. But for me, it's going to be mentality that wins this series. How strong is their mental game going to be if they lose another game two here as we head into Search and Destroy? Epsilon's hot hand, it belonged to Vortex, and that's the guy I would love to start things off with to open things up. As we take a look, it's going to be Epsilon on the attack. Splice will be setting up on defense. With Epsilon, you are going to see a lot of rerads as well. You're going to see a lot of the aggression fast into A, um, or down that left-hand channel towards B. They're gonna get in the face of Splice. They don't wanna give Zero, Madcat, that, that long-range gun battle. They don't want it. They wanna get up close and personal, and Vortex, he's gonna be one to do that as well. But the bomb is gonna be in the hands of a teammate this time, and it looks like they're heading towards B. Everybody running together, and then Vortex, he's gonna double back, see if he spots anything middle. Nothing quite yet. Early bullets are gonna signify the bomb is rotating over to B, and here's the first attack. Dave with bomb in tow is going to challenge two. Now, previously, you got points for planning towards your score streak, or excuse me, towards your payload. Now, that's no longer the case, but Dave's still your bomb carrier. Is that still a good idea when he's one of your strongest gunners? Uh, I think, yeah, definitely you can put the, hand, uh, the bomb in the hands of Dave. I don't like the play that he did and push it forward so, you know, aggressively. However, he gets back, he plants the bomb, and two go down, make it three, all up to zero as a 1v3, very shortly into a 1v2, but he has spotted one, and he's opting to go around the outside. He's going to spot him and actually finds himself in a 1v1. He didn't get touched either. Vortex didn't land a bullet, so it's an even clean fight as Zero takes on Dave, but Dave's NV4 just a little bit more pure. Tough situation for Zero, but here is your star shining for Epsilon. Yeah, not a bullet was missed there, Dave. Just cleaning up, uh, and I think Zero did spot him, but it was just a little bit too late. Again, just on Dave's play, He's confident. He really, really is. He came after me. Came to me after the EU United. He said, "Look at that scoreboard. Look what I just did to EU United." He, when he's feeling himself, he's on fire. But I don't want him to get too into it, too aggressive, um, like he did. Zero seems like he's just playing things slow. Madcap watching as well. And you know what? It looks like they've read the Epsilon playbook as two players. They're flanking board. Hello, we're taking a different route. Yeah, Dave, I said he had the enemy before. It was actually the K-Bar last round. This time around, he has the E-Rad, and he could have seen a player to his left. He doubles back, though, after Josh gets first blood and will now find the second kill. So it's going to be a three-on-two advantage for Epsilon. They have the man advantage, and they're pinching in. Vortex finds Mad Cat. That leaves Zero, last man alive once again, and he is simply pinned between three players. Drop shot from Hawkey there, and you've got to feel Jud's probably like, dude, like, I thought you were watching the flank. Two players, Madcat and Zero, were dedicated to watching both middle and A. 
They stuck through the bottom and behind, and Jerd, they just was a free pick for the Epsilon squad. They're going to clean up round number two. And the one thing that does, uh, you know, kind of surprise me a little bit is when we go into Epsilon after these round victories, no one's getting up, no one's screaming. And, and you know, I'm not disappointed with that. That just shows a lot of composure and their focus here. It's going to be a long day, right? You're opening things up with your winner's semis. Yeah. But then you have to wait before that winner's bracket finals and hopefully the grand finals match. The team's taking their time to open things up, though, in round number three. It's a very aggressive Jurd and Bance. Dave answers back with a double of his own. That makes it a two on two. And Jurd will find a third kill now on Josh. Only Dave left alive. Can he get the ace here, Momo? Oh, it looks like it. He's got no! Jurd. The ace from Dave single handedly gives Epsilon the 3 0 lead. And again, so focused, so calm, not getting hyped, not screaming at the other guys. But you saw, after he killed that first player, he pre-fired that door. It's like he was reading the minds of Splice. He does clean up with the last couple of bullets and an ace for Dave. I said when he's feeling himself, he's, uh, he's very, very confident. With that score line, puts him at 6-0. And, oh. and look at the score streaks. Already has Trinity Rockets. Perfect 6-0 and oh start. One more kill will give him the bombardment, and that will basically seal the deal in a search and destroy if you're playing it the right way. Hawkins going to spot the full push from Splice. Doubles back to his teammates. They're going to give up the plant and then try and push in. First, the Trinity Rockets, though. The first two Rockets are wasted, but Dave connects with the third for a double kill. Eight and zero right now for Dave. Two players left, only one. It is all Epsilon right now, 4-0. Splice, their S and D from what I've seen this event, they've been 6 nil, 6 ones in their favor. And Epsilon, they're making them look amateur right now. I was asking Mad Cat, you know, we've seen you guys go to so many game fives, and he says, I play for game five. Well, you don't want to put yourself in this <laughs> position where you have to win three straight. Perfect start here to the series from Epsilon. They win the hard point. They haven't dropped around in Search and Destroy. If Dave gets a kill, we talked about score streaks. Well, he has a Scarab, could earn a second Scarab, and of course, he'll unlock that camo. Yeah, it's camo, it's bombardment, it's 5-0. and oh. it, It's pretty much game over if that happens. Uh, and you know what? Judging by the minimap, that is going to go down. Dave will get the score streak from bombardment. However, getting aggressive, Josh is... Again, you know, kind of going out on his own. He's just going to find a second. What is going wrong for Splice right now? You could say everything for the bombardment. That's going to be saved for round number six as Epsilon, they clean this up. And I, I almost sigh because I, I don't know what Splice are doing here. I mean, the pinches have to be so annoying. I feel like every fight you see, it's a player from Epsilon sliding in, starting the engagement. Yeah. Splice never seems to really feel it coming in. That play from Josh, he gets the first pick, then he challenges the second player, but there's already three bullets in him from Vortex. Fantastic teamwork as Epsilon crushes in on their opponent. And we see a lot of teams, you know, they, they play for A, and uh, I think it was Rogue actually yesterday. They basically pushed everyone into A, and they sat there. They didn't do anything but defend, and Josh is pushing out. Don't like to point it out, but Mad Cat is 0 and 5 with Camo. Here we go. Dave surely would be adding number 10 to the scoreline, and yes, he will. It's Mad Cat who finds 0 and 6. It's a 1v2 pocket. Hawkeye's got this. Hip firing for the help. He's going to finish off the kill. 6 0. They didn't let Mad Cat get a single kill in this game. Immediately spotted by Dave, pops the camo, takes him down, and from there, it was the rest of the team crashing in all at once. Fantastic start from Epsilon, and I don't know about a lot of you guys back at home or the people who are here in the venue today, but this is a bit shocking for me to see just how strong this team truly is. Yeah, it, it really is, and you know, even if you put the likes of, you know, an Optic or a whoever up there, you don't expect a 6-0 over Splice, not after just winning uh, the playoffs themselves, and just in the fashion that they did it, I feel that game was over in about seven minutes. You know, it was very, very quick rounds. Dave, 10 kills to his name. Fantastic streaks to open things up. It was Hawke in game number one. Vortex topping the leaderboard in that hard point. When it came to search and destroy, though, we see why Dave is in the running for the MVP of Anaheim. You don't want to miss it. Game number three between the European juggernauts is coming up next.
Just four teams remain in the winner's bracket, and two of these squads are from Europe. It's Epsilon's Dave going up against Zero in game number three here, our G Fuel key player matchup. What are we looking at, Momo? Well, one MVP from stage one and a potential Anaheim MVP. This is gonna be two juggernauts going head to head. Keep your eyes on Dave from Epsilon, Zero from Splice. Game number three starting any moment. And we are back better than ever. There is a look at the s and monster, Dave, who just went off on Crusher. But it was a team effort for Epsilon to get to this point. They lead the number one team from the EU Splice 2-0. It's a troubling time for Splice and their fans right now. You know, a lot of Europe have got behind these guys after their playoff victory. Uh, and right now they're 2-0 down. This hasn't been the case for any series this tournament long. And um, it's gonna be difficult because Going into uplink, I still favor Splice, but it is that momentum game changer, you know? Splice take this, we could be seen in game five. I mean, you look at the uplink leaderboard, Mad Cat, a 1.41, that's simply ridiculous, but Jurd, a 1.37 right behind him, and even zeros in the top 10 with a 1.22. On the other side for Epsilon, it's really just Dave. But you look at the man, not only is he getting the kills, he's also put up 16 points that's basically going to be a top five performance so far in this tournament. Yeah, it really is. And Epsilon's uh, Oblink is no slouch. You don't want to underestimate them at all. And we've talked about Dave just in general. His respawn KD has been off the charts this event so far. But Splice is their bread and butter. They know how to play this game mode, and they will be looking for the reverse sweep. However, they were in this position twice already at CWL Birmingham, and they couldn't close it out. You know, it just seems that there's matchups in the world of Call of Duty, the competitive scene. Optic Gaming versus Luminosity. We always know that's going to be a tight series, but it seems that Luminosity has the edge. Epsilon, they may just have the matchup edge against the Splice lineup, and it makes me wonder, is it Josh knowing the old Splice strats at this point, or is it simply just the makeup of the play style of the two teams? I mean, it's funny you should say that, because Josh actually, uh, for a long period of time through probably two, three years ago now, went up against Jurd, and they were always on opposite teams, always in grand finals of European events, and Josh was like seven victories to one against Jurd. He was Jurd's kryptonite, people used to say. But in the recent years, Jurd caught up, you know, and it was time and time again, Jurd just got the better of him when he was teaming of the likes of Tommy and Swanee. Yep. And it was pretty much neck and neck, and even until Birmingham, you know, getting two over on Jurd in the grand final, we're coming into this event, they've not really matched up against each other, but this, this is, uh, this is showing as an all Epsilon affair right now. The one thing I will say though, Epsilon, they didn't even make playoffs, and the reason why is Luminosity beat them to it. And who was in the final of that playoff? It was Luminosity and Splice. Oh, they're just looking for revenge right now. Epsilon, they were so close to making it into the playoffs, they fell short in stage one, trying to prove that they belong in everyone's mind to be a top tier Call of Duty team. Talking to Josh, I asked him, where do you feel you fit in the global pro rankings? He says, I think we're top four. I think Splice is also top four. So he has a lot of faith in the European teams. He thinks that people should be taking notice and they're proving you why that belief is so strong coming into today. Here's a look at Dave though. The monster from game number two returns here in game three. We showed you he was number four in the overall KD leaderboard for Uplink. He is number two overall in the tournament across all game modes. Okay, kicking things off. Splice, they're looking for that reverse sweep. Zero and Jurd, they're gonna pick up one kill apiece, answered back by Hawkey. But that drone is already moving forward, and this is what Splice, they like to do, put the pressure on early, looking for an early one-point play, maybe a two, as the beatdown potential. No. no, Zero, what? Zero's just dodging, weaving, having fun, and you know what? He's taking one to the grave with him. <laughs> just touching him first, and then gunning Dave on the second attempt. Zero, opening things up with the dunk. Now you see Mad Cat, Top middle, slowing down this Epsilon push, and everything was looking great until Hawke came flying through and picked up the double with the K-Bar. He's on a three streak. You got Dave with the drone. 
Hawking's the lead blocker, and he's going to find action. Two players to look at. Doesn't hit either with bullets, but the one-point toss gets off, and it's in. Epsilon scoring effortlessly. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is what I saw from Epsilon on this map yesterday. Just want to point out a nice double from there, from Dave. Uh, but yeah, they get the drone, they push it to that top side of the map, and they really just go for those one-point plays time and time again. They're not afraid to do so. And for me, they're a strong one-point play team. But Splice, they love their interceptions. Hawkey leading the way here, slaying seven kills to his name, three kills back to back, and Epsilon. They're right back in it. They're taking the lead. That was pretty amazing. After that first one-point play, Epsilon stayed up. They won the slaying battle. Vortex stayed alive in the base. Everyone from Splice had to look at him, and that bought time. Hawking comes in, gets a double, and then they convert it into a dunk. This time around, though, they fall just short. Splice clutching up on defense, clearing the drone, and keeping this a tight game. Hawking just seems to be on fire right now. Three plays do go down. He's the only one up after respawn. And now the drone, it looks like they're going down this train side. And the pressure's being put on from Bantz. He's trusting an uprock and an ERAD. And you know what? It's paying off for him against Vortex. But Epsilon, they answer back with all four. And just like that, they will have control. We're going to see Splice respawn. They're going to have to get another wave of kills before they can take any more points away from Splice. Talking to Enigma6, they said that Splice is one of the most dangerous teams in the tournament because they don't just rely on the gun skill. They're always in a position to trade. Their teamwork is what separates them from other squads. On the flip side of this, though, I feel like I've seen Dave and especially Hockey picking up so many multi-kills. The Splice players have been stacked up, and they're just gunning down multitudes of players and then pushing this drone forward. Epsilon, they only lead by one, but I feel like this game could have been out of hand if they were able to hit their early dunks. Yeah, and we've talked about all three players, Voltex, Hockey, and Dave. Just talking about Josh for a little bit, he hasn't been the one to stand out. However, he is the communication master. Bant, seven kill streak for him as he started slow at three and seven. Now he is 11 and seven, fully streaked out and in the lead. And thanks for him, Splice are going to be 4 3 up. Two minutes left to go on the first half, and he's looking to receive, and yes, he will. Can he convert for another two point play? Look at the speed from Splice. Bant catches fire. He's still going, looking for double digits on this streak. Has all of his score streaks to work with as well. One player will be challenging. Bantz knows it. He has the timing. That drone is going to be distracting people. Bantz finally pushes out and will be gunned down. Great patience from Vortex to clear out the player inside his base. But Zero is still threatening with the drone. Jordan Madcat in the feed. This is at least a one-point play. Yep, up and over. And you know what? The interception was close, but not close enough. Zero being a menace now in the enemy spawn. He's going to pick his triple, uh, sorry, three kill streak to make it a triple. Is still going for number four. And this is what we know and love from Zero. That MV4, so, so strong. Trinity Rocket's coming in, and that's from Bantz. He's, he, he's just out slaying them right now, and this is what happens with Splice. And this is getting so ugly. Look at the passes. Perfect. Zero didn't have to look anywhere except at his opponents. The drone lands in his hands. He dunks it through, picks up the kill as he falls to the ground. Six streak now from Zero after a nine streak from Bantz. Bantz is on another six streak of his own. This game is being taken over by Splice, showing everybody why they are the number one team when it comes to uplink in this tournament. A couple of minutes have gone and Bantz has turned that from three and seven to 19 and eight. Just bear that in mind as we see another seven kill streak. 11 and three with 30 seconds left. Josh going for a solo play there. He's got a full short, but he's got to pass it to his teammate who will convert for a two point play. That is just what they needed there. 11 and five. Dave, five scores so far for Epsilon. But Splice, they have just constantly been hitting the Epsilon base over and over again. The score streaks leading the way a second time. 13 to 5 as we go into the half. It's all Splice here playing from our first side. Will they be able to get the job done from the more difficult base? I'm not sure they need to. Yeah, with that lead, you could see they were investing a lot. They were using Trinity Rockets here, there, and everywhere. I think they've still got a couple of bombardments to play around with, have some fun. Uh, but that's Splice's uplink, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to learn how to play, this is a team to watch in regards to this game mode. Yes, they are 2-0 down. Yes, they need to bounce back. But we've talked about uplink being that momentum-changing game mode. 21-9 we see from Bantz. Hockey had a great start. He's still positive at 14 and 12. Dave is even, but he simply got shut down in the later parts of round one. 
And Vortex and Josh, those are the two guys who need to step up their game, specifically Josh, who's gonna lose the opening gunfight to Bance. Bance is gonna find two kills, and just like that, it is Splice with map control. Jurd and Zero in the feed as they start to work towards the drone. And look at it, we still have Scorchers, we still have the Bombardment available for Zero. He could even call those down before running this dunk in. The fact that Vance has actually got 33 interactions on the map, make it 34 as he picks up Josh and he takes down Vortex 2. This man is on fire, but the last alive is Zero. Bobbin and Weaving trying to go for a two-point play, secures the one. A little I panic. Think, yeah, I think he could have got it, but you know what? You're going to extend your lead. Why not? 14 and 5. You know, you're only leading by 9 now instead of 10, but that is going to still be a 5 possession game. And as Spice showed you in the first half, if you lock down the map, if you have players going on 6, seven, eight streaks. You can definitely convert score after score. They need to get something going though, and they need to get it going now. Vortex with a double, a third kill was coming in as Hawkey's on a four streak. He's working on the trinities with just an assist here. Challenges with no help, and Bance's rocket is gonna cut him down. So no score streaks to speak of for Epsilon, and just like that, it's gonna be a solid defensive stand for Splice. They have the drone in hand, but that was getting murky for a moment. Yeah, it's really worrying for Epsilon right now because you start to see the payload from Bance and Jurd coming in. You've got score streaks in the back pocket of Splice. Everything is in Splice's favor. Oh, and the nine points lead that they've got, by the way. Three minutes, 15. I can't see Epsilon turning this around, but if they do, it needs to start now. Speaking of turning around, Zero just slowly panning to his left, picking up simple shots there with the MD4 flying through the air. Jurd is going to fall to Josh, though, as that's two straight kills for Epsilon. They're starting to push up the map. Dave, though, the lead blocker, is going to be cut off. Mad Cat in the feed as Zero calls in the bombardment. It only picks up one, but it zoned out the push from Epsilon. And you see those yellow arrows perfectly set up to stop any push Epsilon wants to throw at him. And you can see Zero doing absolute work right now. A lot of people question why sometimes he doesn't pull out the ERAD. And one thing that I will say, he plays on a sensitivity of three and three. So he, he can't really use that fast, you know, quick lightning pace play just like Vance nicely demonstrated for me there uh, but yeah he's gonna stick to this NV4 he's very very comfortable with it and it seems like he's finding his feet in the series but still with a nine point lead and three players dead this should be changing hands here we should see a lead extended yeah and one kill from zero is gonna give him the reactive here in the base should pop it right now doesn't We'll save that one for later, but we talked about the overdrive now kicking in for Madcat. He's about one kill from that. Bantz has a camo as well. On the other side, keep your eyes on Josh. He's the camo player for this team, and I believe he's only halfway there. So, excuse me, Dave is the camo player. He's got it unlocked. Vortex is going to have some overdrives to have a teammate. The FTL jump coming through. No score, though. I got all jumbled up on the payloads, but at the end of the day, Splice is winning the slaying battle. Yeah, slaying all day long, and this is what I, we talked about with Splice. It's just their uplink, the way they do it, it is quite unbelievable, especially after being 2-0 down in the series. Uh, and this is not using all their streaks and payloads. They've not even popped one of them yet. I think Jurd's used his FTL, uh, but that's about it. Here's the camo, though, from Dave. The opening camo, and he is going to get tagged up champ and only able to get a one-point toss off of that. 80 seconds left in this game. You need more of your Epsilon. You basically have to play perfect. Honestly, at this point, I'm calling it Momo. I'm yep. just looking at the kills from Splice. Who's going to finish on top of the leaderboard? Currently, it's Bance at 33 and 20. 33 and 20. 53 interactions. It, it's just crazy to see how much he's actually done on the map. It's, it, it, he's been all over the place using his score streaks effectively. You know, those Trini Rockets, the Bombardments as well. We do see Epsilon get another two-point play. But there's only 50 seconds left. And honestly, those 50 seconds could be full of either payloads or score streaks. Here it comes, though. The Overdrive's going to make this just a two-possession game. Okay. Hockey slides in. Look at the scores from Hockey. He won another ridiculous streak, 27 to 21 right now, winning the gunfights in the base. This is not as clear cut of a game as I thought it would be. I think Zero just uses reactive armor and he got killed. Could this be another two point play? Yes, it will. Oh 20 my seconds gosh. left on the it game. We've got one player, Vortex. He is waiting for the receiver of the pass. All Josh needs to do is pass it to Vortex, but it's not that easy. They know there's a player behind him, and it's Mad Cat who is going to lock it in for Splice. The double in the middle of the map. The camel coming from Bance. He's going to keep it out of the Epsilon hands. That game was looking like a blowout until all of a sudden Epsilon turns up 
and makes it a two-point game. But at the end of our 10 minutes, it's Fleiss walking away as victors as they now make this series 2-1 in favor of Epsilon. I've not seen a, a team do that to Splice in an uplink. And I actually think Splice, I know they just won that map, but they're going to be looking at each other thinking, that was too close for comfort. We had a nine-point lead, right? We had You're feeling good lead. about it? They had three payloads when Epsilon had won. And it was uh, it was basically all over for me. You know, they could have rained down the bombardments. I will say Zero's reactive armor was burned. It wasn't used at all. Uh, Dave, you know, his camo, he made the one play, point play instead of the two. I think it was the wise thing to do, but it could have changed the game. You've, there's a lot of ifs and buts still in this series. And uh, Matt Four coming up next, I've, uh, I've got to think, you know, is it ending here or are we seeing a throwback? And now if you remember back to Birmingham and both of the hard points were so close. I think it was a three point differential across the two games. So yeah. very tight series when it comes to that game of breakout has been a weakness for Splice. We know that Epsilon, they remain perfect on that game type on breakout. But Scorch, this is a different beast. I think I'm going to give the edge to Splice's ERADs, but Epsilon keeps playing the way they have. This could be another 250 to 249 er well, if you missed anything in that uplink, here is a recap. 13 to 5 on side one. But Epsilon, they dominated that second side towards the end. 7 to 1 in their favor. 1.59 KD for Bant. I mean, he, he was electric. You know, the first kind of six, seven minutes of that game, he was uh, he went from three and seven, seven to uh, at 19 and eight or something like that. It, it was ridiculous. 90, 120 seconds from Bounce. Pretty sure he went on a nine streak and then an eight streak right afterwards. And at the same time that he was dropping the eight streak, zero caught fire with the seven streak of his own. So the two players showing you what they're capable of, but what worries me is how they started to panic. They never seemed to have a solution once Epsilon started scoring those dunks in the second half. That up link, it's over, but you can show what happens to Splice when you throw them off their game. It really does. And Vance and Zero, those two players, which in the last 18 months have kind of stirred up the whole European Call of Duty scene because these two guys take them out. And we always had that core three, four of, you know, Jerd, Swanee, Madcat, you know, Tommy, Josh. They were always just mixing around. And these two guys just come in, make a ruckus and say, look, we're number one right now. And in that game, they most certainly were. However, the likes of Tommy, you know, now representing Fnatic, he's out. We saw how tough it was for Millennium. They placed top 40 at this event. You know, that shows how tough this event actually is and really just proves how good these two teams are. A rough finish there for Millennium. I think there's a clear cut number one and number two in Europe. The question is, who do you give that number one title to right now? Epsilon trying to make the case as they could close out this series with a win on Scorch Hardpoint. Game number four coming your way any moment and keep your eyes on that man. Hockey was a key in their breakout. He's the guy who got fully streaked out going on that big seven run over at Caves. He had a fantastic game three. When everyone else was struggling, he was kind of the fire that got them back in the game in the second half. If he keeps playing the way he has, Zero is going to have a lot of trouble on the other side of the stage. And of course, you see his uh, Oblin KD, not the best, 0.87. That's across, of course, the tournament. Maybe the weak side of Epsilon, if you like. But, you know, if your weak side is the one game mode where you only have to play it once, that's probably the best one to have. Uh, but Hardpoint, they've been lights out. Say it time and time again, they're taking North American Giants down. They've already shown what they can do against Splice. You know, three series back to back now against what? Splice, they've taken the hard points. What was his uplink KD? Uh, 0.87. 8.7. His overall respawn KD is a 1.1 coming into this match. So that just shows you how strong he's been in the hard points. So for me, keep your eyes on Vortex. He was their star in game one right yep. there with Hockey. Vortex topping the leaderboard for them. Hockey right behind him. On the other side of the stage, Mad Cat's been up. He's been down. He's going to be a key to victory for me for Splice. We've seen Pants go off. We saw Zero go off in that uplink. I think this is Mad Cat's turn. I think Madcat, you know, if he steps it up, I think Splice will be able to take it because the Bants and Zero that we've just seen, you know, so, so strong. Jerd, you know, he's been consistent, but he's, you know, he's been consistently, you know, neutral or a little bit positive. If he steps up his game and really kind of just drives this home, I, I think this game could be decided by one player. And there's eight on the stage. It could be any of them. Dave, for me, I actually was pretty disappointed. You know, his hard point, he was the weakest player against Splice. The uplink, he didn't have a great start. He comes into this with a number two overall KD. He needs to turn up and he needs to, needs to take this home for Epsilon. You ready to see MVP Dave this weekend? Dave, just Dave, as proof says. It's just Dave. It's Give me just Dave. Dave, baby. 
give me Dave. However, Dave, he's got four plays in front of him and uh, four familiar names. Bantz, Jerd, Zero and Madcat. He's done it before. Can he do it again? 15 seconds away. Anaheim, are you guys having fun today? We had people in the venue at 8 a.m. That's before me. I had people drinking gallons of water. They came in prepared for the day, sitting in the front row on Championship Sunday. The $200,000 tournament continues here in our winner's bracket semifinals. This, a battle for a guaranteed top three finish. Don't forget how Splice won at that playoff. Championship, it was of course including this map rotation. However, starting things off, Jerd, he starts 2 and 0. Vance cleans up, and we're going to see Splice take control of the bridge. Jerd is so good at these opening fights, his melee skills just give him that advantage at short range. But how many double kills are we going to see from Hockey? There's his first one, finding a third now on Mad Cat. Look for him to work towards streaks. Running the Centurion, that means he's going to have the trophy system as well as a trait. Any grenades throw at him will be blown up. He just jammed for a second there, and you know what? Timing might play in his favor as he does tag up one. And of course, will be Jerd. However, he's doubling up, and that should be a trade. It will Ooh. be efficient play from Bantz, because all he's thinking about right there is those spawns. He doesn't want to lose them, but unfortunately for him, he has. You see those spliced arrows, the yellow ones on the minimap, so far away from the new hill. Four points remain on the bridge, but it's Epsilon gathering 27 of your opening 60 seconds. Splice, they're gonna have to break through the initial setup, and it looks like a four-man burst. One player's gonna come on the flank, and even though Vortex is pre-aiming it, Bantz just has the faster quick draw. Kills being scored back in fourth, and it looks like it's gonna come down to Mad Cat in the back end, finds Hawking, and now Splice is set up to make the comeback. He might only be three and four, but that one kill could have got him about 20 or 30 seconds for his team. You see the spawns coming in around the bottom side of that map. And you're gonna see Epsilon push the wolf pack. This is what they do best, but can they break? Jerd takes down his own teammate, not what you wanna happen. And now it gives Epsilon a little bit of a power position. Trades do go down, a 2v2 is 20 seconds left. Epsilon will clean this up and they will reach around 60 points coming in towards the end of this. And you know what, they've rotated straight away. They know Splice too well. They play them day in, day out. They are not coming for those 15 seconds. Vance is gonna win the opening fight. Zero answers on Josh, so Splice set up for the new hill, Epsilon milking every last second over at the turbine. The hangar fight's gonna go down. This is a big battle between Hockey and Mad Cat, and Hockey's gonna win that. So keep your eyes on the blue arrows coming off respawn. All four down for Splice. A simple takeover in the hangar. How did they execute that so perfectly? I mean, that, that really is kind of pushing each point at each time, but individually. You know, I will say, and this is rare, because usually you retake a hard point as a team, but they just win that won their individual gunfights. We saw on the bridge, we saw on the, the top side and the lower side. However, Splice, they're looking to do the same, but Epsilon, they say no to that. Three kill streak for Dave. Is this the Dave that we've been seeing all weekend long? He gets taken down, but he's got Vortex and Hawkey to back him up. Just one player's remain, and that 17 seconds should go to Epsilon. We could be seeing triple digits. Absolutely. You look at the numbers here, you got a five kill advantage for Epsilon so far in our first rotation. We're going to the final hill as we head to the drill. The battle going back and forth. Josh, Jerd, Zero all in the feed, but it's more Splice players. A, a team kill coming through from Zero. He more than makes up for it. One more challenger coming up against Zero, trying to buy time as you see those three yellow arrows surging forward. Zero still staying alive on a three streak, finding one more player. Won't be able to get it done. Vance is there though with the double, Mad Cat with the third, and this is Spice's Hill. Yeah, Spice has, has generally been very, very good on the drill hill and has been for quite a while now. Uh, Epsilon are pushing them and are testing them. But you can see Vance pushing forward, gaining control. Just a little room, he will continue with the dominance and pushing back, he's gonna find another. Josh entering from behind and with 20 seconds left here, this is gonna be challenged again because we're gonna be going to the bridge next and it's obviously so close, it's open from both sides. I'd like to see that Splice do fight for this last 10. Madcat, I told you he was my player to watch, kind of the X Factor for the squad. Up to this point, he's been outgunned. You've seen him losing a lot of 1v1s, especially to hockey. At this point, he's five and eight, but if he can turn up, Splice will simply climb back on that scoreboard. Down by about 40 points, they need to get something going. Madcat's looking to give him that momentum. Finds one, finds a second. Now looking for the third, he knows he's here, and there goes Dave Madcat on the four streak. He's now so close to earning these rockets. Yeah, and these are so, so important. You've got hills like Drill, hang, uh, 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 Turbine at the back. 
the very, very open hills. Bridge included. You can make a lot of kills with these score streaks. He isn't going to get it there, as we do see all four members for a second there go down for Splice. Epsilon retake. They have the better spawn, of course, going into Turbine as well, but there's still 25 seconds left. And you saw that from Mad Cat's perspective, there was a player at the end of Caves threatening to come out. That kept him honest. He wasn't able to mm. just look away. And that bought time for Vortex to come on the flank. You touched on it in game number one. Epsilon does such a nice job of not just running out in the open and getting picked off. They wait for their teammates to get into position and then all push at the same time. The cohesive unit is going to crash in one more time. The FTL jump being shown off, but it's Mad Cat holding strong in the back. But for how long? Two more players up for Splice. Four players from Epsilon in the feed, and it's going to be Dave winning that one against Bants. Yeah, and I just want to highlight Dave and give him a lot of credit there, because the way he moved in, hid behind that middle turbine, took Madcap from the back, and then made the final kill. He basically solidified Epsilon's strong position here, and he's continued to do so. Finds another, does get camo, but Vortex strips him of that title there for a second. Epsilon, though, they do carry on. Josh is now the last one here, but he is accompanied, I believe, by Hawkey. 25 seconds, that's going to be 175 to 96. Could Epsilon be defeating Splice in the winner bracket semi-final here? Not only are they going to beat Splice if they keep playing like this, they could blow them out as we see the rotations continue. Splice is set up for the hangar first, but just like last time, it's Epsilon coming in and causing problems. The flank from Josh is going to go up against zero. Unfortunately for Epsilon, zero holds too strong. Three players going to be attacking from the back. Zero needs help. He needs the reinforcements to come off the spawn. They're here now, but Josh causing problems once again with the ERAD. Yes, straight away we see everyone taken down, but the spawns are in Epsilon's favor. These 45 seconds could be the defining moments. Can Splice get back into the game, or will Epsilon finish it? Everyone is pushing from Splice through this narrow, narrow bridge. Josh making light work of that before being taken down. And now a 1v1, Mad Cat and Dave. The double comes in for Dylan. AKA Mad Cat, and we're gonna see Splice try and get a couple of points back on the board before heading over to Drill. These two teams just throw each other. <laughs> I mean, it's just eight players crashing in all at the same time, and this is what Josh said it's gonna come down to. Who is slaying better? Dave, positive seven. Josh, he's negative. Vortex, even. Hockey, negative. It's kind of been a one-man army in Dave. He has the camo still to work with as well. On the other side for Splice, the man to shut down is Bant. You need more out of Jurd though, 13 and 17. Mad Cat's got back to even. If Jurd heats up, we can see a tight game as they can get a full 60 on the drill. Yeah, it really is. Splice are definitely not out of this one. And with Jurd turning up like this, he'll be working towards his own streaks. I just want to point out that Dave not only is 21 and 14, but he's got over two minutes on the hill. That's basically Splice's current time right now. As we do see one player, Dave, going off. But this time, Splice, they retake over on Drill. They have the score. They have the time to do this. And with 30 seconds left, and this payload's coming in for the likes of Vance. Uh-oh. Just as I say that, Epsilon stripped that right away from them. That was all Josh and Vortex. Both players pick up two kills. They come surging through. Flying through the air with the ERADs. It's just too fast for the players set up inside the hill. Hockey's finally going to be cut down. Splice challenging for every second. They know they have to contest. They're going to win the final battle, and now they'll set up at the bridge. Josh is going for the long flank. His teammates all spawning up at the turbine. They're going to try and hit at the same moment. Here comes Josh. He's going to be the opening fragger, but Mad Cat and Jurd holding strong on the back end for Splice. Mad Cat's going to find the fourth kill in Epsilon's first retake attempt going to fail. Both players and both teams, should I say, do have camo. We're looking at one player, Josh, very, very close to his reactive armor. If he gets that before this turbine hill, it can be really the game-changing moment. But Splice, they're working to their own score streaks, their own payloads. Centurion is available for Madcap, but I've got a favor. Epsilon's obviously their camos, their reactives are going down here. Bant is turning up. Wow. You're a Splice fan. You need to get behind these boys right now because they are getting back into it. This is basically a 100-point difference now it's just 30 points separating these two squads epsilon though can make this so difficult for splice if they're able to pick up the final seconds they're actually going to leave the bridge they're fighting for the control they don't want to give splice a full 60 here on the turbine 
Epsilon set up first. Splice is running in one at a time. Zero's gonna find one. He's traded out by Hawking, but Bant's challenging from the other end, and Splice gets the retake. Only Dave up for Epsilon on this side of the map. Will he choose to use his camo? D Dave needs to be careful here, because this camo is either gonna win him the game or potentially lose it him. The 20 seconds will be coming back from Splice. They will hold strong, but look at this. They're waiting for, to be a wolf pack. You can see Josh is almost luring them in. He has reacted. He's gonna make the first kill, but be taken down instantly. Hawkey goes down as well, and he can't use his camo because the jammer comes in. Fantastic Splice. Sorry, incorrect. He was the wrong player. Dave does use his camo, and he retakes it. Like I said, game-changing moment. All they need to do is hold this hill. They can win right here. The Centurion's gonna be shut down. Mad Cat's payload no longer working. Those yellow arrows spawning across the map. Only one player can challenge before this game's over. How fast is Jurd? He needs to get in there and distract for three seconds. 249, 250. Splice is going to the loser's bracket. You saw Splice, they said Jurd. You, you just contest it for one second and we'll hold the hanger, but it was a little too late. Dev, Dave, sorry, he knew it was coming. And we see Splice bow out here on the main stage. Three series back to back from Birmingham, the grand final. From here in Anaheim, Epsilon Esports, they are a force to be reckoned with. Where do they go from here? I mean, one place they do go is the winner bracket final. But how far can they go? This is incredible. They are guaranteed top three after failing to make it to the playoffs back in stage one. Epsilon is now going to be in our winner's bracket finals. They're guaranteed a third place finish here in Anaheim. And they're in the running for the trophy right now. They really are. And the crazy thing is, of course, Luminosity, you know, they're on the other side, that semifinal against EG. If they do obviously take down EG, Epsilon not only will be able to, you know, kind of get revenge on them, but Luminosity was the team that denied them playoffs. You know, they'll be able to kind of get revenge or redemption, if you like. Uh, but it's definitely not over for Splice. We have to highlight they'll obviously fall down, but there will be a loser bracket run for them. European Call of Duty, it keeps my mind all so crazy all the time. Anything can happen, but Epsilon Esports, they're turning up in Anaheim. Absolutely. I mean, I'm exhausted. It's been two very <laughs> long days. We're dehydrated. We can barely get our job done, but the players on the main stage, they are performing at their peak. And right now, we have Jack on the main stage with our winner. Insane stuff right there to kick off championship Sunday. Epsilon have knocked our stage one champion splice into the loser's bracket. But to Dave and crew, it's no surprise in the last three series you've had against them, a nine and one map count. What about Epsilon just has the number on the splice team? I say like we do, we do play them a lot in scrim. So, well, actually not a lie a bit. We don't actually play them a lot, sorry. But um, I don't know, it's just everyone, everyone thinks they're the best and we're just here to prove it wrong. Absolutely. Well, you showed it right there, making it look easy, especially in the hard point game modes. But moving forward, you still have a tournament to win. You're now in the top three. You're looking good. What does Epsilon need to improve on, though, in your opinion, to be able to seize this tournament victory? Um, it's probably the closer maps to hard points, like the shorter range ones, because we're absolutely terrible at no clue how we just want to scotch hard point. Worst map in the game. Um, but it's just just the hard points like that. Retaliation break out of fine. It's just if we if we get a throwback or something like that, like we don't think we're gonna win. So just stuff like that. Well, you're guaranteed the top three, as we mentioned. That's a winner's bracket final. You're waiting to see who will be your opponent between Luminosity and EG. Who do you think it's gonna be? What's the map count series score gonna be over there? I think uh, Luminosity will take out 3-0. Wow, okay, so Luminosity, you think, is the team ahead there. Either way, this has been Dave with Epsilon. They've now moved into our winner's bracket as the Europeans are looking so darn good. But this is just the start of the championship Sunday when we come back. More great Call of Duty action.